Hello everyone, hope you can hear me. Um, welcome to the stream, it's nice to be back after, um, well it's been an erratic few weeks hasn't it? Um, I've been very busy with conventions so I've I've just been a little bit exhausted. But anyway, here we are, back with um, something a little bit special tonight. Um, um, hey Pasta, hey Captain Forsyth, um, hey I am Suarez, I am Suarez, I hope I've got that right. Yeah. Um yeah, thanks for thanks for jumping back. Hey Star Swept. Ahoy. R. Um so yeah, we are going to be um I'm going to start working on Tales from the Crow's Nest, which um I'm doing this a little bit earlier than I anticipated because I still haven't fully finished um the western themed one I've got, which is A Fistful of Feathers, but I'll I'll give you a sneak preview of that in a moment. However, I'm going to be working on this tonight so you can actually see how how I go about developing these expansions. Um, so this will be a very rough product. As always with this stream, it'll be the um, the first draft. Um, so, it, you know, it, it kind of gives you um, an idea of what goes on behind the scenes before this becomes something a little bit more polished. Um, I might carry on doing it. So let's just get one or two announcements out of the way. So um, do it quickly. So I hope you all had a very stress-free Black Black Friday. As you know, at Critical Kit, we don't do Black Friday. We try and um, just keep our prices low all year round. So um, we don't want to put any stress on you or any fear of missing out on things. Um, so that's that one out of the way. But I hope you all, um, if you were out looking for bargains, I hope you got the bargains that you wanted. Um, what else have I got to tell you? Oh, the dice. I'll show you the dice that we're giving away today. So these are, let's see if we can, I'm not sure whether this will be able to catch them right, because if I get too close up, it's probably not going to work, unless I put all focus. Let's try putting the autofocus on. Um, so where do I do that? Um, how to show the webcam settings again. Um, let's put autofocus on, and I can show you the dice. And so let's see. Yeah, hopefully they'll... It can be this camera can be just so sensitive. Anyway, they are pretty glittery. They're they're I think they're kind of red and green. They've got a real ice cream. Helado de Fresa vibe. I like to call them. They've got quite a strawberry vibe going on. Anyway, we got the whole sets here. So I think they're called Helado de Fresa on the site. We did have them on before quite a while ago. And then um they sold out. Um, and we've only just got them back in. Um, so yeah, so on that note, on the dice note, before I get on with this, we um, we will be at our last convention of the year um, this Saturday. So we're heading to London on um, Friday. Um, we're taking Molly. We're also bringing, so if you've watched previous streams and, and seen Isabel, met Isabel, my 13-year-old um, daughter Isabel is also going to be coming with us. So she will be on the stand on Saturday. Um, it's a one day event in Hammersmith. It's called Dragon Meat. If you can ever get to London to do it, um, it's really worth doing it. You can book yourself in for some games. Um, we are next to, again, we're going to have to stop meeting like this. We are next to the um, Free League Publishing. So we're right next door to them. Um, I was looking at some pictures of uh, Dragon Meat from last year. And what I hadn't noticed is that when I took a photograph of the stand, when we set it up, Versen was directly behind us, so Free League were behind us again. And um got my ticket since for Major Aware, buzzing for it. Excellent. Okay, well do come and introduce yourself. Um so there'll be Sarah, myself, and Isabel there. So you can um, you can come and have a chat with us. Um it's a great, it's a it's a lovely little event. There's like I say, it's on about three or four floors of the Hammersmith. It's it's a strange one, but it um yeah, it it, it well, it's a strange one compared to the ones we normally do, but it is extremely busy. And it's um yeah, it's the last one before Christmas, so it's the last chance to get in and um get get yourself some Christmas RPG goodies. Um that's it really. Um so yeah, I wanted to show you um how I how I develop these games. I do have a sort of standard template, which is it's just it's based on the prompts um that we use. So tonight we're gonna be looking at some um pirate, some swashbuckling um themes in in the for, for be like a crow this probably won't see the light of day until january maybe of 2023 um I, I can't see it being much later 
Um, I'm Suarez. Yeah, we do have some plans to come up to Scotland. We should actually, sometime around late August, we should be doing Tabletop Scotland. They did invite us last year. Um, my son's birthday was on the same... His 18th birthday was on the same day as that event, so we had to say no. Um, however, this year, it, it's his 19th birthday, so I, he seems quite um, relaxed and chilled out about it. So we will be going to Scotland. Um, we've got about 16 events planned for next year so we're really looking forward to that um yeah so uh, but yeah we don't so w when we've finished dragon meat we we will have about seven weeks off or so and then we will be back at beach beachhead in bournemouth we'll be literally starting the year off right down on the on the on the south coast and by summer we'll be right up to i think it's in perth is is tabletop scotland live i think i'm not Sure, I assume that might be above Edinburgh. I'm not sure. It's it's quite a way anyway. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to tell tell me better. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna do um, we're gonna do this Tales from the Crow's Nest today. We've also got what I managed to get set up this time is um, is YouTube. So if anybody w wants to watch on YouTube as well, the live feed is on there, um, and we should be on Facebook as well. So this should just fire out everywhere, which is why sometimes I might respond to something in the chat that some of you don't see um anyway um yeah tales from the crow's nest so before i go into doing tales from the crow's nest i will show you um this is the one i'm currently just finishing up and working on i'm really excited about this one uh, fistful of feathers uh so what's what can i tell you about this one well it's a western setting and i am still um, working on some of these things, but we're going to have a new um, archetypes um, mechanic. I guess it's not a mechanic, it's just a flavor. Um, so that will just give you a, a few extra options. So you can choose the, whether you want to be a bounty hunter or, you know, you want to be a drifter, etc. Um, but yeah, you can see here, I have been working hard on this. We've got some lovely art from Kias again. Um, some different animals this time, not just crows. So on the in the Western book, We've got um, this lovely horse, and we've got this sort of coyote wolf style thing. But yeah, I'm 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 well into this one now. I do have a few things I want to change on it. But yeah, we've got um, yeah, I've I've started writing a lot of the um, well, a lot of the elements that make up the prompts. I'm really happy with it. It's always a lot of fun, as you will see tonight. We've um, Rooksbridge is actually from, so this isn't actually called Rooksbridge now. It's called the Rooklands. But you see, we've got um, a little western map on there as well. Um, so yeah, this is, let, so let me, let me come away from this one anyway, because we, what we're going to be working on today is the, what I would call the first draft of this. So, um, you might be thinking first draft and it's got a cover already. Well, this is how I tend to work a lot. I tend to work with getting the vibe and getting the feeling and everything, everything right. Hey, Matt Taylor, how are you? Thank you for joining. Um, I, I tend to work with getting the vibe and everything right first. That's what I always want to do. So I everybody works creatively differently. I always work from a visual sense. I have um, I get these foggy ideas in my head. And what I normally do, hey, Richard, um, it was really good to meet you. I think we met you at London, right? You definitely came to see us, I remember. Um, well, that's fine. You're still in the drawer, if you, even if you just nip in for a moment. Um, so, yeah, so the... Um, where was I? Yeah, so the I I as far as writing and being creative goes, I am very visual, so I tend to work off prompts. So um, yeah, th that's why I get things things like covers ready first, or maybe I dot a few images. So you'll find sometimes when I'm working on something, I will dot a few images about my work, um, or maybe I've got a book, a sketchbook, or some clippings, or whatever. Um, Often when I have an idea as well, I will approach, if, I, if I'm sure the idea is going to stick, then I will approach an artist and say, right, I, can you create this for me? Because I've got an idea for this monster. I have no idea what it looks like. If you've got this month's critical crate, you might have seen Heston Blooming Spore, um, although they probably haven't landed yet. If you're a Patreon, you would have seen the PDF of Heston Blooming Spore, um, who is a little Myconid um, chef that I created, which was based on the back of a, con a concept by uh, Modular Worlds, who who create resin terrain. And I actually saw one of the um, the rough sketches they did for this mini that they designed and I created this this character off it. So yeah, I, I tend to work visually. 
So let me let me take you through quickly through um, the skeleton of um, a Be Like a Crow expansion. What I'd also say at this point as well, you can um, you are actually allowed to create your own Be Like a Crow content. There, um, I'm not sure where it is now, but we do have a document somewhere. Uh, but you can contact me on crow at criticalkit.co.uk to find out more about it. So you can publish your own stuff. You can make money from it. Um, the only thing you have to do is you have to put, you have to write that it is uh, like, firstly, whenever you mention Be Like a Crow, um, you have to use our copyright symbol. And also when you, um, when you publish it, you need to put, we have a little like a graphic that you can put on just say, that says something like compatible with Be Like a Crow. Um, hey, I finally gave in. Thank you for joining. Anyway, let's look at the skeleton. Um, so yeah, so the first thing, um, I have here. We can ignore the sort of the sort of preamble page. Um, what we tend to have on the on the first page as you go in, we have a punny funny title, or just a, a title that's. So I think um, I think for the Western one, it's Once Upon a Time in the Nest. Um, the Crowthulu one is What Are You Afraid of? Um, so we've got a title here, and then I've just split this into three sections, which I do in each expansion. We have an intro to the theme. So this is, it's it's just a little bit of text that gives the the general vibe of everything. Then we have something that actually explains what this expansion is, and then we have a little bit of something that explains what's new, what, what you'd expect to find this expansion, because the expansions aren't just a rehashing of everything with new prompts. I do try to put something new in them every time. So, for instance, in Crowthulu, we had um, the fear mechanic. In um, the Western one, we have the archetypes, and I've not really decided what I'm going to do with the pirate one yet, but if you've got any ideas... Um, Throw them in the chat, and I will. Uh, you might see them in. You might see them in the, uh, in the expansion. Um, so the next thing we have in the template is the um, crow's crow's nest life cycle stages. So I've, I've that title might change, but I've called it crow's nest at the moment because the the expansion's called Tales from the Crow's Nest. What I generally do in this section, and and this happens the same in the rule book as well, um, is I put um, I put a little journal entry just to give you a sense of. Um, a bit of storytelling in this setting. Then we have um, four sections, Flegslin, Juvenile, Adult and Old Crow, which relate to the life cycle stages, which are analogous to um, levels in um, in this game. And, in you know, depending on the setting you're playing in these, as you level up, you will be afforded some things or maybe, maybe some things that go against you will occur from these. Um, so, for instance, in the Crowthulu setting, when you're a Flegslin, you actually... Don't get scared as much because you haven't actually, which seems weird, but you haven't actually got a concept of what is scary and what is not scary. Um, bottle messages you can come across with some kind of legend quest treasure map. I'll tell you what, just give me one moment. I'm going to get a piece of paper because you've already started. Um, so I'll just write that. Bottle messages. I like that. We're going to come on to that in a moment. Um, but yeah, if anything, any ideas you've got, um, keep just just throw things in here. Characters, locations. Um, uh, what else have we got? Objects that you can find. So treasure map. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So then we've got crow's nest specific rules, which is where um, I just showed you on on specific rules that um, you know you have archetypes or you have uh, archetypes in the Western setting. You have fear. Um, what else have we got? Then we have, these are the templates for what we fill in. So these are for the prompts that you draw on the card. So we have objectives, which are things you have to do. You have characters, um, crow's nest characters, wild west characters. You have crow's nest objects and you have um, crow's nest locations. So what I want to try and do, what I want to try and do with this um, is I'm not going to get it all done this week, but um, I want to try over the next few weeks leading up to Christmas to, to to just to do this every week and show you how how it works, how we polish it up, and how we get to the get to the final product. Um, so that should be a lot of fun because you'll get to see all the mistakes, all the things that go wrong, the creative process. As you can see here as well, I've I've put shark in and um, a, a seahorse just just to make it a bit nautical. Um, but yeah, it's that, that's, I just like these things around me while I'm writing because they kind of keep me in the setting. They make me feel right. And I don't, what you will notice as well as I don't do these in a linear fashion. So I might jump, 
I might jump. This is going to be quite hard for me as well. So I'm 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 writing to. I generally try to write when the inspiration comes, but I'm writing to a schedule here. So obviously on the stream, I'm starting at a certain time and ending at a certain time. But when I write anyway, what I tend to do is I work on something that's easy or that's coming to mind or that I feel like writing at the beginning. Writing is something that gets progressively harder, I think. Well, it starts off extremely hard and that's just getting past the blank page. Once you've got back past the blank page, um, I tend to tackle the easy bits first and then I tackle the things that I'm stuck on. I, I daydream a bit. I give them some thought. And then comes the editing, which is which is where the work is in writing. So you'll find that a lot of things are just thrown down here. If you've watched watched the stream before, you'll know this is the way I do it. I you know when I'm when I'm creating anything. Um, you, this um yeah Matt. The, so the middle of the story is the hardest. This this the saggy middle they call it in writing. Um, yeah you know it's that bit in a movie where you've got to keep everybody's attention, or it's the bit in a novel. Um. Not too bad when you're writing things like this and writing games because generally uh, the bit in the middle is where I tend to... It, that, that's the bit where I think of that the player is um, gathering information for their quest or getting things together or or making the journey towards their final final goal. So it's not... I don't find it as difficult in games writing, but it's certainly difficult in um, in when you're writing longer form fiction. So let's... Let's take a look. What I guess what I was trying to say with all that is that I might not start at the beginning. I might just decide to pick on something, do that, and when I've run out of ideas for that, we will run on to something else. On that note, I think we should probably try start on objects because um, Captain Foresight threw a couple of objects in that I think we can use. So we'll start with objects because objects is always a good one to start on anyway. I did that with... Um, with pretty much all of Be Like a Crow stuff. It was either locations or objects because they're outside the world of the characters. So it's kind of like you're building the world first and then you're coming back into the characters. So we always have a create your own or draw a game from this table. Um, So we, I start with, so these are the objects you can find. So if you draw a red two, a message in a bottle, And then what I'm going to do here, straight away with this one, I won't always do this. So let me just zoom this in. I won't always do this, but I'm going to put the, put the placeholders in because I've got something I feel would work with this one already. So if you don't know how Be Like a Crow works, these placeholders would mean you have to draw another another prompt. Pastor, would you would you put a blank template up somewhere, maybe Discord, so others can create their own personal ones? Um, I will. What, I, what I'll probably actually do is I will throw it on our Discord, but I'll also throw it on, um, I might throw it on the website. Um, yeah, and yeah, that'd be quite good. I mean, I use some software called Affinity um, Publisher, which is a lot less expensive version. I think it costs about forty nine pounds. Um, it's a lot less expensive version of um for of of Adobe's tool. So it, this is good for doing um print work. I do all my print work in this. I've got there's another one that's about the same price called um, Affinity Photo. They're really good. They're really powerful. And they do the job. So that's just just a little thing. If you're having to pay on a monthly basis for Adobe products, I would recommend investing. I mean, if you're paying for Adobe Suite three uh, or, or just one of one of the one piece of Adobe software, three months of of um, paying for that, and you could have bought this, and you've got this. This is a great piece of software. Um, so a message in a bottle. So a character is in trouble. In so what we're going to do is we're going to say in location. Um, so what you can do is that might not make sense. We might come back to it because if someone's thrown a message in a bottle, not necessarily. They might throw a message in the water to get the message to someone from land. Generally, I know the, the the trope there would be they were on a desert island. But basically, what would happen in the game here if you if 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 you drew a two a red two, it would yield this prompt a message that you find a message in a bottle. And then you'd have to draw again against the character table and the location table to see. Um, so we're going to put, can you help them? Well, actually, I'm going to put, the note reads that, and we can come and do this. The next one that we had was um, from, again, from Captain Foresight. Please, please throw things in. 
Um, I'm going to stick this a bit further down. Um, a treasure map. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Because this makes it more fun. Part of a treasure map. Um, X marks the spot is missing. The other part of this map must be somewhere. It's also worth noting that some of these um some of these items that you find they do give you advantages, etc. Um so we might actually move I think actually um, I'll tell you what. Um No, we'll leave that there for now. We could move that to an objective. Um, yeah, so if you if you do have any um, if you have any ideas of anything, just just please do throw them in the chat. Anything that you'd like to see, um, yeah, see presented in this. So what other what other objects could we have? Well, I'm going to put one down here. Is a marlin spike. So use this in place of a claw attack. To do one extra injury on a successful attack. Okay. Oh no. Oh, I'll tell you what, I could make that easier. Can I use this in place of a claw attack to do one extra on a success? Well. Okay. I'll I'll leave that for now and we can tidy it up a little bit but a little bit later. Um yeah, so could you maybe in let's have a look. Oh, part of it is nice. It's relying on a second draw to put together a mission. Yeah, so this is how Be Like a Crow works. And there's all I mean and, and everything's dynamic in it. So it can get one of the hard parts about this is what does does mean I have to play test it quite a few times is just to make sure that the prompts make sense. Because I think some do slip through the net, some prompts don't always make sense but you know you you tend to gm yourself and you make you make them make sense if they don't and you can ignore them the whole point is it's like an, an exercise in creative writing it's a tool to help you get writing and creating stories it's to help you with your gming you know to to, to give you that role playing fix etc could you be receiving sos okay compass is a good one could you be receiving sos from other ships maybe a morse code with a light um, I like this, a compass. So the compass is good, and I'll tell you why the compass is good. Um, we can instantly do something with that. So we'll put a compass. We'll put a tiny compass. Whilst carrying this, you can make all navigation checks with... Authority. So authority in this game is is the equivalent of um, advantage if you play in D and D. So whilst carrying this, you can make all navigation checks with authority. Okay, tiny compass. That's good. Yep. Um, white flag used to negate. Yeah, 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 yeah. We could do a white flag. White flag. Okay. So whilst carrying in this, you can make befriend checks with authority. Because I guess the insinuation is... Oh, I got another cup of tea here. That's all right. I got two now. Thank you very much. I don't mind having two cups of tea. So um, a white flag. That's quite a good idea. We will put that one in for now. White flag, you can make um, befriend checks with authority. So the, the logic... Oh, spyglass, that's a good one as well. So let's stick that one down here. A spyglass. Whilst carrying this, so th 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 sometimes these objects will turn up as part of one of your quests or your missions as well. So even th you might need to take the spyglass to someone else, but while you have it in your possession, you can actually actually use it. Yeah, let's just go to the 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 never enough cups of tea. <laughs> Piling them up here. Um, okay, so um, yeah, spyglass is good. Whilst carrying. Um, 
whilst carrying this, you can make all um, search checks make sense, right? Search checks with authority. So let's just come out a little bit. We're starting to, we, we've come out, you can see we're starting to fill this up a little bit now. It's starting to look good. Um, let's have a think about some other things at Pirate. A, a, a small length of rope, a small length of rope. Um, and I'm just going to put on this one, make a successful use tool check. So make a successful use tool check to use this. That's a bit clunky, but so you'll notice that I'm underlining the, the check names because that's how all of the other all of the items work. I suppose I should probably put... Um, right, now a parrot, we will write that down because that's going to go in a different section. But thank you, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so we will put a, par a parrot down somewhere else. So a small length of rope. Mace, right, okay, mine spike, claw attack. I guess I should probably put a document as well if people are going to be writing their own, making their own things for this. I should put a document up where... It kind of has some, um, just some guidelines for how to present things so that it's in line with the rest of the, with the rest of the book. Tiny compass, you can make null navigation checks. Okay. Eye patch. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And so that the eye patch is a good one. I mean, it had to, it had to come up, didn't it? So eye patch. Well. I'm going to put, I'm going to make this one into a miniature eye patch. Okay, whilst wearing this, you can make all befriend checks. So I'm going to do two things on this against pirates with authority and all scare checks against other creatures against non-pirate creatures non-pirate creatures because <laughs> you could also probably have that you can scare um, a parrot or something like that um, against um, and all scare checks against other with authority that's cool and sometimes it's good to mix it up where you have it. It gives you authority on one thing and then a penalty on another one. A lantern, yeah, a lantern's good. Um, let's have a look. A hook, hand, a gold coin. Oh, right, okay. I need a peg leg. All right, okay. I have to re just let me go back a second. There's so much going on here. Um, I don't feel like I've got to do any writing here. A, a parrot pet. I've written that one down. An eye patch was good. A nice eye patch. Right, I think we should probably... A miniature eye patch encrusted with gems well let's let's um let's just embellish that a little bit um what else have we got in the chat a gold coin yeah i like it ah yeah that's that's a good point a gold coin okay um we could do something with that so uh, well we we would call it um a doubloon right is that the right word i think that's the right word a doubloon i will catch up I will catch up with everything else in a moment. A gold coin. Yeah, I think it's called a doubloon. Let's have a look at the character sheet and see what we could use the doubloon for. Because one of the things you could use it for is to trade. Oh, signal. A doubloon. Use it to a gold doubloon. I don't know whether you'd put a gold doubloon, I suppose, whether they are gold or silver. Use it to... Um, actually, I'm going to use something else for signal. I like the idea of having a gold coin, but I'm going to use this for, use it to trade with another creature for object. Mm, I'll just put for another object, for an object. 
me just let me just make that so it's not jumping about. Oh, sorry about that. I've rotated it. Reset rotation. Um, for in their possession. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, oh, oh, can't. <laughs> Let me write that down. So it be it wouldn't be a hook, hand it just be the hook. <laughs> a hook, yeah. A... Yeah, okay. A hook that was once fastened on someone's hand. Okay, we'll come back to that. That's a good one, um, for sure. And maybe it's part of that guidance for designing things, potentially mechanics, etc. Objects, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, that's that's a fair comment. I should probably put a guidance doc up, uh, seen as on the line, because I do want people to write things of good quality and things. And and it's, you know, I'm happy for people to go and write things and and and, you know, if they if they can make money off them, they can make money off them. The main thing for me is that, you know, the quality and the and the name's not affected, and and people know that it's not an official product. It's just um, compatible with. Um, yeah, so to have something that help people. Pieces of eight. Um, yeah, pieces of eight. I'm going to put them on the other side because there's nothing wrong with having a couple of money. All right, so we can now use um, Pastor's idea there. So we can say a gold doubloon, use the tray. Um, or use it to make a signal check with authority. By reflecting light from it, so you can use it to signal something. And again, in the game, you have to make the story. You have to sort of guide the story yourself or fill in the details yourself. So the signal check, um, you decide what you're signaling. You know, you decide how that creature interprets the signal. Um, a lot of this stuff, a lot of this stuff is good. As yeah, okay, I just saw that somebody just corrected my spelling. Thank you. Um, that's that's where I am. Oh, okay. Well, we can stick that one in. Hang on, a mini tricon hat. I mean, it's got to be a mini tricon hat, right? It's got to be wearable by a bird. A fair doubloon. Make a trade, but suffer a penalty on checks with that faction in the group. That's a good. A fake doubloon. Ooh. Oh, that is interesting. I'll tell you what. Let's go do that. A fake doubloon. Use it to trade with another creature. Um. Yes, a wanted poster. Although I do have a wanted poster in um, a fistful of feathers, so it kind of makes sense. Uh, I d I. D I could put it in here, but I'd rather one after the other. I'd rather use different things. Should we say oranges and lemons to avoid scurvy? Right, okay. What we'll do is... That's good. A bag of orange peel. Um, orange and lemon peel. A bag of orange and lemon... Is it peels? Yeah. Um... Eat this to stave off hunger. If you play the game, this will make sense to you because getting hungry is one thing that happens in the game. Hunger. And we're going to put two uses. Sorry, I should spell that out because that is... So when we have to put uses, so you can use the... You can use the, um, the lemon and orange... Anybody's got any more ideas for food as well? That'd be a good one to put in. Um, what else have we got? The tricorn hat. That's that's amazing. A mini tri, a mini tricorn hat. <laughs> I don't even know what to do do with that yet. Um, but that is really cool. Um, we had um in the cybercross setting in the main book. There's a mini pair of uh, motorcycle boots, which are just. In fact, they came up. Rum. Mm. A tiny. A tiny flask of rum. Drink this and... 
okay, and here's what I'm going to do with the run because it's all part of preening. So in this, in this game, injury points are a sort of meta measure of not just your physical, but also your your um, you know your mental state as well. So I think what we're going to do, I drink this and um, heal one injury point, but. What shall we do with a drunken crow? A drunken COVID? Then next four checks with a penalty. Okay, so we can so we can we <laughs> so the the cost of drinking this and healing an injury point is that you will um you'll become drunk for um the next the next well i wouldn't say probably not the four four checks make yeah yeah make your next four checks with a penalty until you sober up okay so Oh yeah, well, I just all checks, I guess, because if you're if it's a flight check you're making or a navigation check or anything, yeah, that's a good point actually. I'm gonna put something else as well. Whilst intoxicated, and we can again, this is the rough draft. Whilst intoxicated, so we might remove some of these, put something. You can only travel to. A hex to the left or right of of you. So you can you can only go left or right. You can't go forwards or backwards. So you can literally only go. You're trying to fly forwards. You will always end up flying sideways. So we might we might adjust that a little bit to do something more fun where you can. I don't know. Um, what's what have we got round our hexes? One, two, three, four, five. Six. You could roll a. You could roll. Um. I guess you could roll a die. And we could also make it. Um. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. That would be fun. We could make it so that you roll a d six. Um. Yeah, we could do, we could do, we could do something like that. Yeah, we could make it so you roll a d six. Okay, which would be interesting because it bring a it bring a six sided die into the game, and it's not an unusual type of die. Um. All right. Anyone suggested a peg leg? Yeah. Right. Okay. So. Uh, I think what we'll do is we might add a section at the start. Of piratey things. So, look, here's what we can do. We can say equipment. We can come here. We've got some specific rules, and we could say that maybe this is just an idea, but we can have equipment. So, we would say that you can have a rapier, you can have um, a peg leg. <laughs> a peg leg, I assume, accounts as equipment. You can have an eye patch, and we'll we'll get these things to do things for you. Or we might change this. We might change this. Um, let's have a look. A musical instrument. Yeah, I'll tell you what I did actually think of for a musical instrument. Although I just before we I start this stream, I was thinking about maybe an accordion um, key or something. So not necessarily an accordion, but an accordion key. Um, Although, what what other instruments would that? I'm going to put an accordion key anyway, and we don't have to figure out what it does yet. Um, we did have a typewriter key in the Gothic setting. I guess they are called accordions, right? What are the little... Um, a hurdy-gurdy, that's right. Ah, okay. A miniature... We're going to use the word miniature quite a lot here because it's way more fun if a, if a Corvid can use it. A miniature hurdy-gurdy. That's the one with the um, 
Is that the one with the, the handle that you wind? The hurdy-gurdy? I think it is. Yeah, a harmonica. Um, I did think about a harmonica. But I feel like the hurdy-gurdy is... Yeah, handling keys. Okay. A miniature hurdy-gurdy. All right. <laughs> Use this to make scare checks with authority. Uh, I'll just move that into here. Um, oh, no, I'll tell you what, actually. Use this to make any... Um, let's have a look. I know what the check is that I want. Tools and rituals. So you can dance, sing. Yeah, okay, use this to make any dance or sing check with authority. Because sometimes you have to dance and sing to do um, to do healing. Yeah, true, true. Do well, we can have a whistle. Let's put it here. A whistle. A whistle could communicate. Yeah, yeah. Um, use this to make signal checks with authority. Let's have a look at some of the other checks and see if we can... Um, I'll just go back and, and tie some of these up. Let's see if we can find some other things that we could relate to checks we haven't covered yet because it's always nice to have a balance. Um, before we do that, though, I am going to tidy this up. Pirates and non-pirate creatures. A white flag would be friend checks with authority. Um, let's have a look. Um, Mitch Edigedi. So we got dance or sing. That's cool. A tiny flask of rum. Drink this. What should we do with a heal one injury point? You can... Next four checks. A spyglass. You can make all search checks with authority. I like that. A small rental look. Right, okay. Hornpipe is relatively serious. A hornpipe is, yeah. Sometimes you have to do some dance and sing to healing. You don't have to tell my bard that twice. Yeah, there is a very bardish element to the to the healing in Be Like a Crow that you have to... It, it does come under preen, but when you join in a ritual um, with other... So when you're healing yourself, you use preen check. So I think you can do that once in a hex, but when you are doing it with other birds to help other birds, you use uh, you have to use a dance or sing check as part of your ritual um or if you're if you're at funeral or something like that so mm. yeah they are they do get a bit bardic on occasion okay uh any other pirate piratey objects that we can um throw in the mix we're only missing one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven we're, we're over halfway uh, we can jump on something else if we need to. Um, and I, we don't have to have, um, f you know, f completely filled out. As long as we've got the objects, we can fill out what they do later. Oh, that's a lovely one. Yes. An oyster's pearl. You see, I like the, I love the offbeat ones. An oyster's pearl. Um, or is it an oyster... An oyster with a pearl trapped within. A we'll just put a successful use tool check. We'll get. What do they call? What? What do they call? Um, I need to know what the parts of an oyster are now. The things, the things you do when designing RPGs, okay. Parts of an oyster. So it's the, here we go, the anatomy of the oyster. The mantle, the gills, the less valve, the hinge. Um, okay. I guess I could just write open the shell. I mean, that's going to make... Yeah, okay, I'll just write up in the shell. I thought I could have put something in. 
I said we'll get the shell open. Okay, we'll just write that for now. Again, we can um, we can rewrite all of this. Um, let's have a look. Um, a skull. Oh, we need a little. So we need. Oh, um, yeah. So we need some some East India Company type of diplomatic seal. Yeah, that's a good one. Maybe we should. Oh, I'll tell you what we should have. Captain Foresight, that's that's quite a good one, actually. The deeds to a small island. Bearing the mark of... I'm just going to put a trading company, because then I think some people know it is, but you can make your own company up. A knife, yeah, we need a knife. Um, I love that Skull is my only companion. As long as you... Right, let me go back through some of these. You shook oysters. I, yeah, yeah. I was aware of that, but I wouldn't have remembered it without that. So you shook oysters, that's right. I don't know what... I don't know why that why that term comes from, but um, as long as you put 5V after anything you search on Google, you always have a good excuse for searching for odd stuff. Correct. Um... I love that a skull is my only companion like a like a cat. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll um yeah. We should have a s we should have a skull in there. But what kind of um what kind of creature? We need a small skull. Because don't forget everything everything we have in this game, we need every object we have, we need to ensure that our COVID can carry it. Um obviously, um Yes, a rodent skull. I think a rodent skull would match as well, because it'll match up with some other ideas I've had for things in this. Um, so we'll put a rodent. I'll flip over to the other side, actually. We'll put something in here. A rodent skull. We'll work out what that does shortly. Anything else? Any other swashbuckly type things? We had a knight, fish bones. A mouse, a fish skull, a fish... Right, okay, fish bones, and, um, yeah, fish bones, and a fish, a fish skeleton. I Did they call it a fish skeleton? <laughs> Is that what it's called? Um, a fish skeleton. Let's have a look. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh. Right, hang on a minute. Hang on. Well, we're going to do... So we're going to come to mice and things like that. In fact, I'm going to leave fish out for now. But I finally gave in, has just thrown a crab claw in the mix. I like that. We're going to put... We are going to use fish and mice, but we're going to use them in our creatures. So we're, we're not going to use them as objects. However, we are going to... We will have crabs, but we will have... Um, let me just get rid of... Of someone. Let's put a user in timeout. Sorry, there was someone on there was someone on YouTube posting um things they shouldn't have been posted. Um anyway. Um let me just admin that. Uh remove. There we go. It's easy. Well, that was relatively easy. Okay. Oh, cutlass, a shiny seashell. All oh, right. Okay. 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 Slow down, everybody. Right. Let's do a crab claw first. That was a good one. And then we'll do a seashell. I like that. Um, and then I think I'll probably come back to them. We'll come back to them next week or something to then fill the gaps in. So I'm going to put um a seashell in. Use this to hear the sea. <laughs> Um, but we could do something strange like that anyway. It's quite cool. You can always tell where the sea is when you've got the seashell. Um, what else did we say? A crab's claw. I like that one. Um, let me get back in here. Um, let's have a look. What else? Uh, a, 
cutlass, damage fishing net, or attack. Ah, yeah. Okay, a tiny fishing net. Yes, I like that one. We could put a small fishing net. Um, let's have a look. A small fishing net. <laughs> like that. Because you could use that to restrain other small creatures as well. Which makes it quite fun. Uh, yeah, okay, good, good. A net, and maybe a needle and thread, a pirate's rum bottle, a fish hook. I think we got some rum. Some kind of damage, a cutlass. A cutlass I'm going to leave because I'm going to... Um, there's a sextant, isn't there? We've got a compass, though, at the moment. So we've already got a navigation thing. Let's take a look at some of the things we're not using. So we haven't got anything that maybe helps us fly better. Um, so we, if we could find something that makes us fly better and... Um, what else? Really just fly. The rest then, we, we're okay. We're okay. A single piece of eight. Oh, we did put pieces of eight, I think. Well, I didn't put them in because we, we were going to switch that. We got the doubloons. Let's just put pieces of eight in. And then what we'll do is... Thank you for that. We'll put piece of eight in and then we'll come back to... I'm going to put two uses. I'm going to say there's two. I'm going to say there's two. Two pieces of eight. Um, so we can put two uses. Okay. Patchwork sail glider. Oh! A miniature sail, yeah. A miniature sail. Oh, I know. A tiny piece of... A, a, a scrap of sailcloth. A scrap of sailcloth. Use this to catch the wind and advance two hexes per turn. Nice. That was a good one. A flag. Yeah, we've got a white flag. So I think we're going to stick with that, just that one flag for now. But look how much we got done there. So we've now only got one, two, three to put, three items. Oh, tiny goggles, yeah. Um, did we get an eye patch? Oh, I think we're missing one, aren't we? we uh, uh, not tiny goggles, but a tiny, um, tiny telescope? What do they call it? I what do they what do they call a what do they call those um a, is it just a scope a pirate scope a brass telescope a tiny brass telescope a spyglass that was it thank you yeah okay did we put spyglass we put spyglass in didn't we <laughs> yeah we did sorry we did do that yeah yeah, we've all yeah, so we have already got that one in, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Um What else have we got? So we now want to I guess we should do this because we only need two more, three more to fill to fill up our um Hey find the word, thanks for joining. Yeah, we we only need four do we need four more or three more? Let's have a look. One, two. We only need three more pirate sort of swashbuckly items um, to finish this off. Uh, so let's have a think what else we could do. I'm going to put a pebble in. I'm going to put an ornately painted pebble. And we'll work out what that does. I quite like that. Um, so we only need two more items, so two more swashbuckling items, and then we will move on to another section, and we'll come back another week and edit this. Oh, yes. Well, a pouch of gunpowder. 
hard tack. Now I know what tacking and jibing is. I don't know what hard tack is. A purse. Yeah, well in fact I'm gonna add the purse to to add a little bit of flavour to this one here. So a purse containing two pieces of eight, because you've also got the purse to use then once you've used the pieces of eight. So we got a pouch of gunpowder. Yeah, Tia, I've just I have put the pouch of gunpowder in. I'm assuming there's just a little bit of a lag, but oh a wax seal. Oh. Okay, let's leave it at that. A gold, a solid gold wax seal of a noble. Right, okay. Should we just should we just have a quick flick through that? And just see what we got. So we've got a message in a bottle, a fake doubloon, a rodent skull, a tiny compass, a solid gold wax seal of a noble, a bag of orange and lemon peels, um, part of a treasure map, a scrap of sailcloth, a mini tri... I'll probably move some of these about as well, just so they're not right next to each other. A mini tricorn hat, which I just... I can't wait to get that. Um, a marlin spike. Um, a seashell, a whistle... An ornately painted pebble. I'm going to put... Um, let's have a look. I'm going to put a pouch of gunpowder, a white flag, a miniature hurdy-gurdy, an oyster with a pearl trapped inside it, a crab's claw, a, a tiny flask of rum, a crab's claw, a spyglass, a purse containing 2%, a small length of rope, a small fishing net, the deeds to a small island. I'm going to put part of a fishing net, and the deeds to a small island bear the mark of a trading company. Okay. Amazing. Well done, everyone. All right, let's move on. I think we should probably be able to do a bit of another section. Um, we'll change this. This should say Crow's Nest characters, not Wild West. Crow's Nest. Um, Crow's Nest objectives, we will come back to at another time. Crow's Nest characters. <laughs> All right, what would you like to do next? Shall we do characters or shall we do locations? I think locations might be a fun one to do. Yeah, good job, everyone. Thank you, everyone, in the chat. I feel like um, um, that was a great help because normally these things take me, obviously, they take me a day to just sit down and go through them all. Locations. Yeah, I think locations is a, a fun one to do. Um, so let's just let's plow ahead and do that. I think I'm going to start here and just put the crow's nest of a ghost ship, of course. <laughs> it's not It's not going to be a normal ship. Um, the crow's nest of a, of a ghost ship. Okay. Um, the brig, yeah. So we need to... Oh, the brig, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the brig. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's put... The brig of a shipwreck. So we can be sometimes specificity is is really good in this. If you if you get two things and and put them together there, Davy Jones's locker. Well, that has to go in, doesn't it? Davy Jones locker. Wonderful. Um, yeah, I love that one. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a desert island with a single palm tree. I feel like it should have some kind of caption underneath it as well. Okay, right. Um, um, a desert island with a single palm tree. Yep. Okay. Um, Captain Claus. Um, what else have we got? Brig, David Jones Locker, Desert Island with a single palm tree. Um, what other things have we got? We've got the Brig of a Shack, we've got the Captain's Well, I'm going to put the Captain's Quarters Of a military vessel. Okay. The captain... A grotto. Oh. Yeah, a grotto. 
Is a grotto, would a grotto be in the cliff, in the cliff side? Um, this is amazing. Thank you so much, everyone, for, um, for helping out here. This has been so, um, this has been so cool. Um, the galley, yeah, the galley. Um, the captain's quarters of a military vessel, the galley. Of a pirate ship. We'll put a rival pirate ship, right? Because we're going to probably... We're going to be pirates as our COVID. I think Grotto's... Oh, a Smuggler's Bay. Yeah. Beautiful, thank you. A Smuggler's Bay. Yeah. And and the thing is, we want we want these to be tropey. They're quite cool because that's the whole you know the fun of this game is getting all these wild things, putting them together, and then having a crow go explore this explore this world. This is what makes it such a fun game. And I will be playing this in the new year for sure. This is absolutely fabulous. <laughs> the marketplace of a lawless free port. Wow. Okay, I did ask for specificity. If I can say it, the marketplace. The market square. I'm going to put the market square in a lawless. Yep. That's in. The Santa Barbara ship, a star fort of an authoritative faction. A star fort of an authoritative faction. Oh, yeah, I don't even know. if that. That's a lot to unpack. The, <laughs> the star fort of the... What have we got? Can we have any military building? Oh, an abandoned shipyard or harbour. Um, yeah, an abandoned shipyard. They would have had dry docks. A dry dock. I'll I'll use that one to 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 give me inspiration for the dry dock and abandoned shipyard. I quite like that. What else have we got? What 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 would we have on shore? What kind of buildings would we have? So the kind of gun fort, like a gun fort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. A cliff top fortress. I'm, I'll I'll have that because that that gives us a military. That gives us a military um, vibe, which would um, which would definitely sit well with what we have here. Um, anything else? Um, let's have a think about this. Um, what else would we have? Oh, yeah, an ammunition store. I'll tell you what. A warehouse on the docks filled with, um, smuggled ammunition. <laughs> The jibby, <laughs> the gallows in the middle of a plaza. Yeah, the gallows. I like this. <laughs> okay. A harpy rock. Yeah. Um, just give me a second. A, let me see what they call that. Let's have a look. Okay, so I'm going to put a, a stack of treacherous rocks off the coast. Oh, well, I'll tell you what we haven't had. The top of a lighthouse. Unless somebody's just... I, I generally think of these things and someone just mentions them and it looks like I've completely just stolen the idea. <laughs> uh... 
Uh, I like the underwater cave, the bathing pools of mermaids, the harbour master's office. Yes! All right, just a second. Let me. The harbour master's office is good. I like that. That might be two words. I do run this through um, a thing. An underwater cave that's asked about by the tide. A hidden. When the tide is out. <laughs> Noble State, bootleggers, tunnels, and nowhere cave. Wow. Okay, we <laughs> the top of I forgot I oh the top of a lighthouse. I started writing that and then I my I just I, I went back to the <laughs> a noble's estate. Let's let's think of something um specific to that noble's the noble a noble, something that's on the seafront. If we can keep it, I like the idea of having noble. I want it all dragging into this. I want it all bringing to the to the shore, though. I don't want anything in land on this one. Um, I'll take the grotto out because I think the cave. We've got a cavern that is inaccessible when the tide's out. Uh, what else do we have? So we have. Um, we've got a few ships on there. Ah, uh, what else, what else, what else, what else? The pier, okay. Um. <laughs> Underneath, do they have jetties? What do they call them? Oh, I've got a good one. At the end of the plank. Does that make sense at the end of the plank? <laughs> I think I know. Uh, I might get rid of that one. I'm not sure whether that makes sense. I'm thinking of walking the plank, but I don't know whether they have the, they have the plank out at all times. <laughs> the walking plank. Yeah, yeah, okay. The end of the walking plank. That's the... That's Yeah, that is a good liminal space. Yeah, that's lovely terminology. That's what we're looking for here. Liminal spaces. Um... Servants, yes, the servants' quarters of a noble's palace. Thank you. That's a good one. We can we can work with that. Um, nobles, we'll call it a mansion. <laughs> Wonderful. You are all very very talented people. Um, what else have we got? A galley on a boat. We've got a galley, I think. The galley of a rival pirate ship. We had bootleggers tunnels. I quite like that. Okay. I'm going to put that one. A bootleggers. Tunnel system. <laughs> These are really good. Um, the Blade Masters Workshop. Yeah, I like that. Um, how am I going to, I'm going to write that one though. I think the swordsmith or the, I might, I'll tell you what I'm going to do behind the furnace of a blacksmith. Smithy, would everybody know what smithy is? I guess, would they? Is that a, is smithy a term that's, um, Yeah, the pawn shop where you could bury all your loot. There's somewhere where you can bury your loot. Um, right, behind the furnace of a smithy, <coughs> what else have we got there? I love we've got Davy Jones locker in there. Um We've got we've got so we've got parts of a ship. I think we've got enough parts of a ship. We've got a watcher's nest. Well, yeah, we've got so we have got the crow's nest, which is the crow's nest of a ghost ship. I'll tell you what, we'll just put the crow's nest of a ship and then we'll put, just do a ghost ship because I think a ghost ship warrants not having to be specific because, you know, you might want to be 
No, actually, no. I still like the crossness of a ghost ship. There we go, I changed my... I think it's smithy, yeah, but I think it's a known word, yeah. A smithy. Okay, well, we'll... I like these sometimes as well, because, you know, sometimes if people don't know the word, they will go look them up, and it's quite it's quite nice to have that where it, it leads someone somewhere else for inspiration. So we've got a desert island. Um, oh. Um, whale of whales. Um, inside a whale's skeleton. Inside a beached whale's skeleton. What about that for a weird place? Beached whale's skeleton. Yeah. Um, drinking in the tavern. We should have a tavern. Yeah, we haven't got a tavern in there. Um, we've got to have a tavern. Um, so... A rowdy tavern. <laughs> I got lighthouse. Um, yeah, we got lighthouse on. Um, let's have a look. Did we have lighthouse? Yeah. Well, great minds do think alike because I put lighthouse in the top of a lighthouse. There we go. It's up there. Um. Yeah, I. That's all right. I did. I did that one though. So we, you know, our, our minds are our minds are attuned. Right. Uh. What else have we got? We've got, we're ready for one, two, three, three more, and we've done, well, we've got the base for our, um, for our locations, which is absolutely amazing. Um, oh, a parrot's perch. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to put a parrot's cage. Um, the reason I'm going to put a par parrot's cage is because it's, it's usually the location is where an object is or where you will find someone or something. And I think if we if we put a if we put a cage, it's more likely you could hold something in that than on a perch. An unmapped island. Well, we got a desert island in there already, so I think we'll <coughs> I think we'll stay away from islands for now. So we only need two more. Um, we've got some gallows. We've got some rocks already in there. A mermaid lagoon. We've got... Well, I'm going to put... We didn't put mermaid. We'll put mermaids in a character. We'll put mermaids in as characters rather than have them have a specific place dedicated to them. Because then the, whoever's using... The, the whole idea is, is we try and keep it slightly vague and open so you can, you can generate your own story. Yeah, the cargo... We haven't done a lot with cargo, have we? Ooh. Um, because I'll tell you what is relatively vague, but also specific at the same time. <laughs> Behind a stack of cannonballs. Yeah, because we haven't got a treasure chest. We have not got a treasure chest, so we'll put um, inside a treasure chest and that will do it because there we go so we have actually got a warehouse on the docks filled with smuggled ammunition <coughs> um i think we're good there i think we're good there should we just do a review of those and we can always come back maybe next week and see what i want to do so we've got a cliff top fortress we've got the brig of a shipwreck the servants quarters of a noble's mansion a cavern that is only accessible when the tide is out Inside, uh, I'm going to put the in front of that, the inside of a treasure chest, a desert island with a single palm tree. <laughs> I so cliche, <laughs> but I like it. Inside a beach whale skeleton, um, the market square in Lawless Freeport, a parrot's cage, the end of the walking plank, behind a stack of cannonballs, a... a, um, a Behind a pile, I'm going to put, because we've got the word stack there. I could have separated them. Behind a pile of cannonballs, the stack of a treacherous rock, which I know is spelt wrong. A stack of treacherous rocks, of course. Behind the furnace of a smithy, a dry dock, um, 
a warehouse on the docks filled with smuggled ammunition. The captain's quarters. Captain's quarters of a military vessel, a bootlegger's tunnel system, the galley of a Ryo pirate ship, the top of a lighthouse, underneath a jetty, David Jones's locker, the Havermaster's office, the gallows in a town plaza, a smuggler's bay, um, a rowdy tavern, and the crow's nest of a ghost ship. I will go through um, this again and go through the chat and things and see if there's any of those we can switch out, but for now, I'm really happy with those. Um, so, I guess what we could do is, I mean, this is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I guess what we could do is we could, let's do, shall we do, let's do some characters next, um, which should probably take us to about, maybe we do five or ten minutes of characters because that went really, really quickly. Um, yeah, look at you go, um, I, sh I, I should be careful because you are all going to put me out of a job. You're, you're probably going to be writing these things quicker than I am. Um, right, Crow's Nest characters. Um, okay. Let's have a go at Crow's Nest characters. So the, the main thing is that we could do here is we could say... Um, so first thing I always do is generate your own character or draw again. So that's our starter, so that you can, it gives everybody a chance to do their own. Um, the um, head of a trading company. All right, let's have let's try and fill one side in with with character. I mean, I'm going to go in with a a peg leg parrot. I'm going to put a mute. <laughs> I think this is the word a mutinous. Is mutinous a word? I love that word. If it is, uh, let's have a look. Yeah, a mutinous. Well, in fact, I don't think the parent... Well, yeah, we'll have to have the peg leg as well. I think that definitely adds to the adds to the flavour. So we've got a mutinous peg leg parrot. All right. Um, um, let's have a look what we got here. Rat faced. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't we have brigand rats? Okay. Um... We'll put a swarm, put them in a swarm at the moment. A swarm of brigand rats. Let's have a look what else we got. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Come back to this. Oh, actually, yeah, they're... So we got a stowaway cat. Let's do that. Uh, I'm going to try put a few animals in first, and then we can come back to other things. A stowaway cat. A swarm of brigand rats. Brandy the barmaid, cabin hand, the carpenter, the ship's surgeon. Cook, let's yeah, the cook's a good one as well. Um a sleepy cook. I don't know why I put sleepy in there. But I th I like to think of a cook who is if you have to sneak past them, they're generally if they're not cooking, they're just fast asleep. Um Aggressive seagulls. I mean, they're a classic. We have to have seagulls in, so we have to have... Let's think. Um, I have a good idea for this. A military... trained seagull. Um, yeah, so if we have a, a military... 
Oh, I mean, I've got the word here. I think this is the right word. A fastidious military trained. Let me just make sure I got the right word there. Is that word going to make sense? Fastidious. Very attentive and concerned about accuracy and detail. Okay, that is going to be a fun character to meet. Um, a fastidious military tame seagull. Uh, what else could we have? I think we got them. We need some. Oh, I've got a, I've got a good one actually. Flying fish. I mean, they're a thing, right? Um. Flying fish. Yeah, I think the seagull. We've definitely got some. I'll probably shift some of these into other sides because I I don't I want a mix of sort of humanoid and um creatures. A uh, uh, yeah, we'll just put some weird words in at the moment because I just seen the shark there. A skeptical shark. Oh, yeah, we could have a crab as well, yeah. Yes. A drunk crab. <laughs> Wonderful. Hey, Kimia, Kimia, Tuna. Um, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I really like that one. All right, so let's just, let's set a vegan shark. Yes. <laughs> Um, um, I know what we could do. A shark who is afraid of the sight of blood. There we go. A very busy octopus. Yes. Um, let's get a nice synonym for that. Um, ardent. Hard working. Right, probably a busy. Busy might be the. Oh. Well, someone has. Someone's thrown in the one. So let me just have a quick look. Right, here we go. So I'm going to put. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to end on. I'm going to stick octopus in. Um, and then I'm going to finish on. Find the word suggestion. We'll finish the stream on that one. Because I think that has to go in the king. And there's, if you've played Crothulu, um, <laughs> if you played Crothulu, then you will understand the reference there. Oh, oh, why? Okay, and then we'll put um, an octopus. Yeah, okay, that's amazing. Brilliant. I think we will finish there. So thank you very much for that. Um... Yeah, I think we'll probably the next um the next few sessions that we do of this, we will probably um next few Tuesday sessions, we'll probably do this going up to Christmas. We'll probably polish this off, we'll get it working, and then in the new year, I think I'll play it. I will I will run this before we um, we'll do a live play test of it. We'll polish it again before it becomes the final thing. Um, but yeah, I, I'm absolutely, I'm amazed by how creative everybody is. Um, it's, it's wonderful to have, um, a lot of people on board helping out with this one. Um, and please do, you know, tell, tell your friends. Um, so yeah, so I'll close up now. We'll figure out who's won the dice in one moment. W what I will say is that, yeah, if you can make it to Dragon Meet on Saturday, please do come and see us. Um, it's our last um, the last show that we're going to be at of the year, we are on the, um, when, when you come in through the entrance, we are on the main gaming floor, so you don't have to go down into the main hall, 
assuming everything is the same. But when you come into the Novotel, we should be on the top, um, the the floor that you come in on. Just look for the gaming. Look for people like Free League Publishing, where you know they're they're quite a big company. Uh, Modifius, who I, whose name I can never say. Um, I'm going to say it now though. Modifius, right? Modifius are also on our floor. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, please do. Um, Please do just um, come and see us. Uh, we're going to be bringing all our sharp edge. We're going to have be like a crow there. Um, you know, I'm 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 available. We've got the playing cards back for be like a crow as well, so that's really cool. And then you're not going to see us for another seven or eight weeks. I am going to be doing the streams, but you're not going to see us anywhere out and about because we we have got all of Christmas off, and we start back up again in February. Right? Let's find out who's won the dice, and then um, yeah, I think that's I think that's it. Uh, and if you do want to, just to say, if you do want to get your hands on um, um, A Fistful of Feathers early and things like this early when they're published, um, you can sign up to the Patreon. I think it's three or four quid a month. Um, I do release other bits and bats in the middle of the month, bits and bobs of things I'm working on in the middle of the month. Um, but you, um, you will get... Um, you will get all the Be Like a Crow expansion. So every time I release one, that also gets given to all the Patreons. Um, that's critical underscore kit, I think. Patreon.com is critical underscore kit. Um, let me go through some of your messages. Can't wait for you to be out and about next year. My, uh, my Dice Goblin. Um, yeah, hopefully um, you'll come and see us. We have actually applied to Gen Con as well. So that's quite big news. Um, they have acknowledged that, they have, that they've got our... Um, the form that we filled in, um, they have also asked for pictures of our stand, which is pretty promising because that means that they want to see what we look like. Uh, Matt Taylor, when is cut off date for Christmas before Christmas? I believe, I believe it's the seventeenth, but I wouldn't. With the way that um, things are going with Royal Mail at the moment, I would get anything in, and this is not just me selling. I would try and get anything in before the tenth. Um, you know we are we're struggling to get things at the moment from Royal Mail in Heathrow. If you've seen my my lovely tweet Twitter exchanges with Royal Mail, um, yeah, we're we're really struggling with them. And you know we do stand behind the workers of Royal Mail. You know they do have a right to strike. They do have a right to, um, you know, demand that they are paid well. Um, I think my main problem is just that that Royal Mail needs to upgrade all its computer systems and get a lot better at what it does on the back end side of things. Um, but yeah, you know, so just just bear in mind that Royal Mail is um, is struggling at the moment, um, and hopefully they will start paying their staff what you know what they deserve, and we can all just get back to normal, especially at this time of year. Um, um, yeah, okay, so so yeah, so that's 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 great. So thank you very much. I am going to remember to do the dice. I'm not going to sign off without doing the dice. So let me just, Sarah has sent me the name. So let me grab all of the names. Um, and let's have a look who we can put in here. So if you just bear with me a few minutes, I have to put these in. Um, there's two more I need to put in. Uh, let's have a look. And we have oops. Please do speak amongst yourselves while I do my um my bit of admin here and then I'm gonna pull the trigger on this and just making sure everybody is in. Yeah, everybody is in. Let's have a look to make sure there's one there. Yep. That's good. Okay. So I'm gonna let me just do this. Here we have a spin. Let me tell you who the winner is. The winner is... Um, okay, so winning winning this set of dice, I will take a screenshot of that so we can post it later. Um, but anyway. Um, drum roll. Um, Tia green up. So I will try and put that in here now. Um, just give me one second and I will see if I can get back onto the regular chat. Um, sorry, apologies. I currently have it on a uh, multi-stream chat. Um, so here we go. So it's at... I don't know whether Tia Greenup is still on the on the stream. Um, 
well, if any, um, if if anybody knows who Tia Greenup is or where Tia Greenup is, we always do manage to get in touch with people at the end. But send a, an email to Sarah. Um, let me just write that name in there. Um. Yeah, send a message to send a message to Sarah at criticalkit.co.uk. We'll send the dice to you. I'm putting these away now. They have got your name on them. Thank you, everybody, for um, just jumping on, you know, and trying to get in. I I think you know as as we as we're growing, I might do a couple of giveaways each each week. It's um, you know I would I do wish I could give everybody a set of dice, but um, if you do want some, just go on the website. They're they're very reasonably priced. Um, yeah, I think that's all. I am going to be playing Be Like a Crow on Thursday at 7pm, I I hope. So I can't 100% commit to this because we've got a lot of things going on Thursday. And Friday we are heading out to London. But I am going to definitely try and play on Thursday. Um, so I, I'm about 90% sure I can play at the moment. Um, this was really great fun. Um, absolutely right. It's really good getting everybody involved. And um, yeah, let's let's see if we can do it again next Tuesday. Yeah, we'll 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 fill in some more details. And um, yeah, well done, group. Okay, I am going to go now because we, I'm going to go watch Wednesday with my daughter and my wife. We absolutely love it. I hope you're you're all enjoying that on Netflix. It's a lot of fun. And um, yeah, I will see you. Um, well, the next time you can join us. Thanks. Thanks, though. Bye.